Welcome to another run of Charleston Battery Weekly on OSG Sports and SDH Networks. Time to get ready for the Battery and Atlanta United 2 at Patriots Point. 8 o'clock Friday night, that is your kick time, shortly after 8 o'clock for those watching on ESPN+. Plus. We'll catch up with Poppy Miller, get the P-block and the breakdown of what happened in the last match against Birmingham Legion. Also, get a look at what happened in the Skybet Championship as a fan of Nottingham Forest was a very, very rough, wacky midweek. And we'll catch up with her about uh, Logan Jadula. We'll catch up with her about last week. We'll catch up with her about this week. And, of course, her fandom for Forrest. And as mentioned, Logan Jadula, he is in the player spotlight. Catch up with one of the guys on the back line that has a lot of expectations this season when it comes to being active on both sides of the ball on offense and defense. So it's Logan, it's Poppy, it's you, and it's me. Poppy Miller in the P-Block, after the break. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm going to let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. As a business owner, you know that every year brings new challenges and opportunities. The success of your business demands expertise and focus. And Country Financial can help you keep that focus by helping ensure you have the right insurance protection in place to meet your goals. Jason Wright can help you create a customized insurance plan that has coverages designed just for your business. Give Jason a call at 678-568-6871 or reach him on Facebook at Jason Wright Agency. Coverages vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Georgia. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Georgia High School Association and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. Welcome back, Charleston Battery Weekly A Block, which means... It's the P-Block. Poppy Miller, play-by-play voice of the Charleston Battery. And we got a couple of things that we're going to talk about this go-around. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about last week. We'll talk about study hall. And, and obviously, toward the end of the segment, something that you and I drift into uh, occasionally, the madness that was the last day of the EFL championship that affected my Swans, your Forest, and about 75 other teams. And it was uh, absolutely crazy on in midweek, and we'll get into that as the as the segment comes to a close. But uh, honestly, takeaways from uh, last week, what'd you think? I thought overall it was a very positive performance, despite the scoreline. You know, we knew Birmingham Legion were coming into it; they were firing on all cylinders after winning that midweek match against Memphis 901. So I think you know when you're coming in with that sort of momentum, and you've got those first game nerves out. You know, the Bashi had a big task on their hands with a new stadium, a lot of newness, a lot of pressure, honestly, on that first game. And then for some of the players as well who hadn't got minutes back against Atlanta, but that was honestly so long ago that it felt like a brand new season for all of the players out there. And I think in the first 15, 20 minutes, we saw a bit of nerves and passes that would normally be connected just going a little short or a little off. So... You know, once the game really got underway and the battery got into their stride, two goals were disallowed. And when you look at that, it completely changed the game. So I think that the positives to take from it were the chances created and definitely getting that first game under your belt again. And nothing like the new guy for Birmingham uh, continuing his run of putting the ball in the back of the net, yeah? Bruno Lata, USL Player of the Week, and very deservedly so as well. He just oozed confidence all that match. When you scored two on your debut and getting a fifth, you know, that's always a fantastic start to your professional career. And then coming in against the Charleston Battery as well, 
uh, and scoring the winner there. So, you know, he's, he's off to a great start. And what a nice feeling for Tom Stone to be able to not rely so much on Nico Brett or Rice at top to have so many playmakers that can really that can really prove to be the goal scorer. What's Study Hall been like this week? So this week it's a bit of a shorter week playing Sunday and then again Friday so I think it's about you know recovering the temperatures are so unbelievably hot here at the minute so I think it's hard to really get that maximum work in given the conditions and given the quick turnaround so I think you know having a day off at the beginning of the week building up midweek and then tapering down getting ready and full energy and full steam ahead for this Friday's match but I think it's more of the same and just finding that comfortability again and, and really we saw the battery a very possession oriented side against Birmingham Legion and in the past we've seen them very counter attacking style so I think that's interesting as well so and, and it's easy to forget at this point in the season we're normally in mid-season swing now and, and so for you to be getting your first game under your belt with 11 new additions to the team so there's still a lot to get you and a lot of team chemistry but it's coming with time and I think if, if they can finish a few of those chances as well because they did so well with creating so many of them they'll be they'll be good to go. And going up against an Atlanta United 2 side that uh, Stephen Glass is putting out a lot of uh, Atlanta United Academy kids and they haven't flinched they had leads in the first half and the second half against 90, uh, Memphis 901 before giving up the, the equalizer late and the latest of late to Cal Jennings. But you're seeing guys like uh, Coleman Gannon who scored a goal. Jackson Conway continues his growth. The, the young kids for Atlanta United too, they're not flinching in this situation at all. And I think you always see that with MLS 2 teams. They've got their eyes on that MLS contract. They're playing with a purpose every single match, match in, match out. For Jackson Conway, two goals in the last two games. And although the results haven't been there for Atlanta, they're such a young, fiery side and very unpredictable as well for other teams. And I think that's always a danger when this team comes in because you know the work rate's going to be there. You know that the youngness is going to be there. And they're just so quick and agile. So... I think that's something to definitely watch for uh, this Friday. Logan Jadula is in player spotlight this week. What's it been like to have uh, the, the Wake Forest grad come in and be a part of things? I think it's so interesting to see this year's back line in comparison to last year. Last year it was a very veteran-led back line with Taylor Mueller, Jared Van Shake, and Leland Darcher back there. And this year, especially on Sunday, we saw Leland Darcher really being the captain at the back. And I think he's learned so much from Taylor Mueller. And having Logan Gadula and Deshaun on, on the flanks at the back, they really were able to get up and get into the attack and, and really use that wing to their advantage. So I think it's an exciting look for the battery, not only to have two good defenders at the back, but two that can really supposed to be a threat going forward and I think that's what we've seen a lot from Gadula of his speed and his vision as well as putting a good cross in from, from the far side. What did you think of the new digs? Loved them. The new digs look absolutely brilliant, you know, having the Ravenel Bridge in the background and the Yorktown and you can just see the water from the back and you know, it's tricky at sunset because the sun is just setting as the players are kicking off and it. Sometimes from the broadcast angle made it look quite hard to see at stages, but I know the players were absolutely relishing being out there. It's a nice, wide pitch, and I think that's something that the battery can really use for their advantage. But excellent conditions, maybe a few degrees too warm, but overall the stadium looked brilliant, and I know the players can't wait to be able to welcome fans back in there. All right, time for uh, where you and I get to talk a little soccer over there. And oh. it was, I know. It was the last day, it was match day 46 for the EFL championship, and it was craziness involving as many as probably 17 or 18 of the 24 teams that were in the championship. Uh, your Forest, my Swans, all trying to figure out what they were going to do uh, this weekend and beyond, and so Leeds United gets promoted. They were safe by 10 points. West Brom, Brentford, and Fulham, they all lose, and that backed them up, but it still didn't change anything. West Brom goes back with Slavin Bilic. Brentford, Fulham, and Cardiff were 3, 4, and 5. The madness happens underneath it, 
and it ends up that Nottingham Forest is out by one goal in goal difference. Swansea wins, puts up a big number, and my Swans get to play Brentford this weekend. It still hurts. I hated listening to that, but that is the life of being a Forest fan, John. It happens too much, and I think, you know, every year they do so well through the middle stretch of the season, and then coming back, nobody knows what the team is going to come back like after something that nobody has ever experienced before um, with the way that the world is at the minute. But it was just so heartbreaking. I think mo- the most heartbreaking thing was to lose by so much. I mean, 4-1 to lose by when you are fighting for a playoff position. But I suppose it's better than losing 1-0 and then scoring on the last stroke of the last second in extra time. But... That one still stinks. I think it'll sting for a while. Um, but, yeah, you know, for, they got themselves in the position, but as we've seen in the past, they just couldn't get over the line for the playoff. And this is our blatant plug for The Athletic. The Athletic has a great rundown uh, of the time frame of all of the games from the championship, all the games that were meaningful on that day. So if you have your subscription to The Athletic, read their TikTok. It's a very good oral history of what went down on the last day, match day 46. And it's still probably not over because there's going to be some uh, legal wrangling that will continue with uh, life in the championship with teams that are not named Swansea or Forest. Blatant, That's at least one good thing. Yeah, blatant promo. Blatant promo time. Uh, broadcast plans. What's going on? What's going on in Charleston as you're getting ready for Atlanta United 2? So we will be on ESPN Plus, kick off at 8 p.m. on Twitter at Chaz underscore Battery and on Instagram at Charlton Battery. And for those that want to keep an eye on you. And I am on Twitter at underscore Poppy Miller and on Instagram at Poppy Miller 3. Poppy, as always, go have a, a fantastic call with Atlanta United 2 coming to town in group play. So it's, it's going to be a fun night at uh, Patriots Point coming up. So uh, once again, have a great call and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Thanks so much, John. Logan Jadula coming up around the corner. Player Spotlight. You're listening to Charleston Battery Weekly. SDH Networks and OSG Sports will be right back after this. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm going to let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. As a business owner, you know that every year brings new challenges and opportunities. The success of your business demands expertise and focus. And Country Financial can help you keep that focus by helping ensure you have the right insurance protection in place to meet your goals. Jason Wright can help you create a customized insurance plan that has coverages designed just for your business. Give Jason a call at 678-568-6871 or reach him on Facebook at Jason Wright Agency. Coverages vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Georgia. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Georgia High School Association and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. Welcome back, Charleston Battery Weekly Player Spotlight. Time to catch up with Logan Jadula. And uh, Logan, first off, welcome to the show and welcome to Charleston. Thank you for having me. All right, so how does a guy who played at Wake, spent time in Phoenix and Hartford, end up back in South Carolina? <laughs> um, I guess it's just a, a whole bunch of different opportunities, things going different ways that maybe I didn't expect, but I'm happy to be down here, happy to be with a good team, and hopefully we could uh, win some games this year. <laughs> So when it came to coming in and waiting for things to start, what was it like 
for you in a new town with a new team in a new situation waiting for things to get underway how much madness was it uh it was a lot it was definitely a lot going on in my mind just because you're not really settled in until you're settled in when, when things start going with soccer and like you know what's going to be the season's going to be like what where you stand in the team and all that kind of stuff so the the quarantine the, the madness that's going on right now it's it was hard it definitely was hard to adapt and uh hard to like get acclimated to the team but i think the time period that it was how long it was it it, it brought us together even more so it wasn't as hard as i i figured it would be i was going to ask i mean because you're you're not the only new guy around but at the same time with that balance of you and the other new guys and the veterans i'm sure that 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 adds to a team chemistry that you would like to eventually have found on the field and you know in meals and things like that being a part of the whole team but i would think that uh the current situation being what it is i would think that one of two things could happen it it could drive you stir crazy from having to be in quarantine and making sure that you're paying attention to what you need to do to stay as as healthy as possible but at the same time be there and be a part of a new team with all of the guys. Yeah, I think uh, the coaches did a really good job of just incorporating the group as a whole, even when we couldn't do things together. Just the Zoom sessions, the, the yoga, the, the little workout sessions we do, just like the talks we'd have, the group message we had. It was definitely essential just to, to build that chemistry without really being able to physically communicate and, and be with each other in that time period. But I think like, the group of guys we have, all being similar ages, just enjoying the sport. I think it was really easy for us to uh, mesh together, even through a hard time like that. I know it isn't, isn't ideal with 11 new players, but I think they did a really good job of just incorporating everyone and making everyone feel like a part of the team. All right. You mentioned it with that four-letter word, yoga. When you first heard yoga was going to be a part of the routine, what did you think? <laughs> um, I wasn't a huge fan of yoga because I just thought it so much in the past that wake. They did. A, they do hot yoga at Phoenix, which was that was <laughs> hot yoga in Phoenix. That that seems almost like a, a, a double, almost a double standard, or you're piling on or something. Exactly. It was. It was already hot outside. If you go inside, and they want to make it hotter. So I thought. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> but it it helps. And it, it brings people together. It's it's challenging. It's definitely something different. Even as a, like a professional athlete, yoga it comes hard. It comes hard for even professional athletes. So what's the hardest thing about yoga for a professional athlete? Because I know that I know folks who do hot yoga and they will swear by it. And, you know, being 7,000 years old, I mean, I do my own set of stretching. It's not yoga based, but I, I understand it. But how does it help the athlete? You know, what, what does yoga do? I think a lot of it is like balance and just obviously loosening up the muscles, but more balance, working on your core. Oh, it's really big for soccer because core, like core, is a big part of soccer. So I definitely think it helps a lot with that. But there, are, when we watch the instructors, they're just they move their bodies in ways that I could never imagine. <laughs> are you more limber now than you were when you started? Yes, for sure, for sure. It definitely helps in that aspect. And I like it a lot. I think it helps. It's definitely hard to get through. It's like having another training session, but <laughs> it helps. All right, so now, and you mentioned the other four-letter word that starts with a Z, with Zoom meetings. How long did it take you to get adjusted to doing those kinds of sessions that way as opposed to being out on a pitch? Yeah, I think that was a, that was a big adjustment because it's, you don't use the ball as much, and then you try to use the ball. It's early in the morning. You have neighbors. Some people live in apartment complexes. Some people live in houses. You have significant others that are trying to sleep. So it's definitely... You have to get used to it. We would do it in like our groups of people that we lived in. It's hard to be on the camera. It's hard to see the camera. It's hard to hear everyone. So we eventually got to, to the point where you get used to it, and it works well. It goes smoothly. We all have the same time period, the same schedule. And then we all came up with our own workouts. Each person came up with their own workouts, so it kept us involved. So it was, just, it was hard at first, but we definitely got used to it. Whole different experience. So which one are you? Are you the one with the roommates, the one with the SO trying to sleep in, the one with the neighbors? The Do you live on the third floor of an apartment complex and you're trying to bang a ball and the folks on the second floor are sitting there taking the broomstick on the ceiling? Which one are you? I was all, I was every single one. <laughs> I was the, had the roommates, I had the significant other, I had the, the, the neighbors that we were kicking balls against the wall and they were, they were hearing it. <laughs> 
so what what are those conversations like it's like do you, do you sit there and you say look i play for the battery i'm sorry and then yeah. they sit there and they roll their eyes and they go like yeah right <laughs> yeah basically yeah, a lot of it goes some some are more understanding than others probably the ones that wake up early Logan Jadula hanging out with his player spotlight here on Charleston Battery Weekly. Uh, what did you take away from last week? Uh, last week, I uh, obviously three months, four months without playing, it was always going to be a challenge. Was, we were all excited to play. I think the first 20 minutes, you saw that we haven't played three or four months that we're just getting our footing. But I think overall, I thought we deserved to win. I thought the game could very well have been 3-2. I think in soccer, there's calls that go uncalled, calls that could be called back and there's bounces and unlucky bounces. I thought we had a few of those, bad calls, and we have to crossbar twice. But I think if you look at our performance, I don't think the score really projects how well we did in the second half, putting them under pressure. And I think we really came into ourselves in the second half and really showed our, asserted our dominance. I think we responded well to the first goal, and I think we responded well to the second goal. We just couldn't get those the goals to get us that point or the three points. So I think going into this week, it's big to get three points against, especially against a, a division team, a team that's also in our division. What's study hall been like getting ready for uh, Atlanta United too? Yeah, um, it's been easier than most teams because we played them at the beginning of the season, so we know their formation, we know some of their players, we know they're younger, we know that they like to possess the ball, we know that they usually play five in the back with wing backs, so there'll be a lot of overloads and stuff like that. So it's been easier to prepare for that, just based on the fact that we. We did play them at the beginning of the year, even though there's been a break. There's the one team that we know a little more about than the others. And I know that since this is your first year in Charleston, you get to kind of sit there and look at things at Patriots Point. Have you had the chance to kind of poke around town a little bit, uh, even though you're obviously taking social distancing into account and you know to-go orders and things like that? Have you had the chance to kind of poke around town? Yeah, definitely. And I love the I love the city. I played the ACC championship at their old stadium, and I, we walked around the town then, too. I think the move to Patriots Point is huge for the club, just getting that younger crowd, being closer to the city. And when, even though there was no fans at the game, like, you could just tell the atmosphere was was different. It was really good. It, like, the setup was really nice. And when there, when there will be fans, I think it will make a, a huge difference, and I think it will be big for the club moving forward in the city, honestly. All right. So now that you've been poking around using social distancing and using masks and things like that, and being and being personally responsible, is there something in Charleston that you've stumbled across that you've become addicted to? Whether it's a restaurant or a particular kind of food or a shop or anything like that. Um, there's actually this one Mexican restaurant that because I love tacos, so it's called Tiki Taco. Okay, because uh, you're not the only one who has mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. I go there a lot, though. I, they probably would say that I go there the most. <laughs> so what's the go-to item on the menu so far? Oh, they have these chorizo tacos that I think are the best in, in town in the city. <laughs> Just figured we'd put that out there since everybody yeah. seems to be mentioning Tiki Taco every single time I mention what folks are stumbling across in town on the roster. So, uh, man, I think they should probably end up uh, supporting you guys and maybe get you yeah. a taco every, occasionally here and there, right? Hopefully. <laughs> That's the goal. Exactly right. Logan, thanks for hanging out with us in Player Spotlight. Obviously, we know that you're getting ready for uh, Atlanta United 2 coming to uh, sir, uh, Atlanta United 2 coming to town for the matchup uh, this weekend against the Battery, the pride of Norwich, Connecticut, and Wake Forest. Logan Jadula. Logan, thanks for hanging out with us here on Battery Weekly. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, we'll put a bow on the show. You're listening to Charleston Battery Weekly, SDH Network, OSG Sports. We'll be right back after this. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm going to let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. As a business owner, you know that every year brings new challenges and opportunities. The success of your business demands expertise and focus. And Country Financial can help you keep that focus by helping ensure you have the right insurance protection in place to meet your goals. 
Jason Wright can help you create a customized insurance plan that has coverages designed just for your business. Give Jason a call at 678-568-6871 or reach him on Facebook at Jason Wright Agency. Coverages vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Georgia. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Georgia High School Association and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. Time to put a bow in another show for Charleston Battery Weekly. Thanks to Poppy, thanks to Logan, thanks to you for hanging out with us for a preview of Atlanta United 2 coming down to Patriots Point a little after 8 o'clock tonight. Reminder, that's when your kick is. So uh, keep an eye on ESPN Plus and be good and be safe with everyone out there. Don't forget, go to charlestonbattery.com, take a look at the new 2020 merchandise, and uh, pick some up as well. And it's some really cool stuff, and I can say that firsthand. So charlestonbattery.com, all the social media platforms, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the match with the twos Friday night a little after 8 o'clock. So for Logan, for Poppy, and for me, I'm just John saying play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games.